Obviously, we're lacking a lot of information here at the moment, but based on the, the news you've received over the weekend, you know, what's your main takeaway? How nervous are you that this will be worse than Delta or not? Good morning. I think it's a little bit concerning looking at the mutations, as Professor Schwab has already said. It's got 32 mutations in the spike gene. This is the key that allows the virus into the cell. We know about some of these, and we know they're concerning mutations. But the kind of scary thing is that there's 26 mutations that we've never seen before in, in sort of areas of concern in that spike protein. So it is possible that this will have a constellation of mutations that is that, that could be more concerning than previous variants of concern that we've seen. But as the professor has noted, it's just too soon to tell, and we still need to do these lab tests, which will take a couple of weeks, and then the real-world data, which will take even longer. So it's just a watch-and-wait scenario at the moment. I know we, we can't say much with uh, you know con anything concrete at the moment because we're still waiting information, but obviously most of us are completely in the dark and blind, and we're looking for some guidance of probabilities. And one of the ideas, obviously, that everyone's hoping at the moment is that it might be more transmissible, but maybe less dangerous. You know, how probable is that? Is that a, is that a completely tail risk and way too hopeful outcome, or is it something realistically to consider? So it is conceivable that this virus might be less, uh, less uh, virulent. This is possible. And of course, if it's more transmissible and less virulent, that would be a nice scenario to be in because it, it will sweep around the world, but possibly not cause so much havoc. So it's really too soon to tell, but that scenario is possible. OK, well, at least it gives us hope, Jennifer, that you're not ruling that out entirely. And, Jennifer, I'll stick with you. And thinking, I just want to get your perspective, for a sort of public health perspective, on the travel bans that we're seeing introduced. I don't think any world leaders or public health authorities introduce these travel bans really thinking that they'll be 100% effective and they'll totally keep out a new virus strain. And we know that it's in Europe already, for example. But, but maybe they, they introduce it because they want to slow the spread of this thing down. Taking the politics away, if that is at all possible, does that make sense to you as a policy? Well, it's really hard to keep a virus out. Borders are porous. But having said that, the, the very late reaction we had with Delta certainly backfired. I think that's what, what governments are thinking about now. They waited too long for Delta, and they just decided to go straight in with the travel bans. I think it's more important to track down the people who have this variant. And you can do that because there's a they, they show up on the test a little bit different than other variants as a dropout. So you can see it. You can track it. You can trace it. So if you follow the people and you, you, know, you perform really good public health measures, we might be able to, to keep the clusters under control. Having said that, if it's very transmissible, that would be very difficult.